Hello and welcome to another video. Today we are going to go through my January reading wrap up and it was a good month for me. I'm really happy with how I did. So I completed 12 books and I'm also almost halfway through another book which I am buddy reading. So so in total, I read 5,919 pages. However, I only read 376 pages of Hair of Ages. So this I will be giving you my thoughts on in February's wrap up because obviously I have not finished this yet, but I'm loving it so far. So yeah. So on to the books. So if you have been keeping track of my channel or my Twitter, you'll see that I co-hosted the Royal Readathon Prince Edition and that was 10 prompts and I successfully completed all 10 prompts, which I am very happy about. So I'm just going to get stuck in with the books. I'm not going to go through what prompt I did them for because I did that in both my January TBR video and in my weekly vlogs. So I'm just going to go ahead and just go through my books and the ratings and what I thought of them. So first up, I read Crave by Tracy Wolf. Um, <laughs> this ended up coming out on Call Pulp as a five star, which I genuinely thought it would be a four star, but here we are. I really enjoyed this and I'm very excited to dive into the sequel. Um, this literally has everything. It has vampires, shifters, dragons, witches, and more and i was a bit hmm so i I'm not, I'm not a massive fan of the ending of this however i have heard that the second like book explains like elaborates more on that ending so you know i'm i'm going into it like that i am looking forward to reading the sequel to one find out more about that ending of this but also because I just want more from this world I I really enjoyed it it's been a while since I've read a book that's had them all and also with dragons I've never known a book to have vampires shifters witches and dragons it's brilliant so yeah this come out as a five star it I gave it nine for characters ten for atmosphere eight for writing nine for plot ten for intrigue eight for logic and nine for enjoyment the logic was pure like would have got a nine if the ending had been different i think if you've if you've read it you'll you might understand what i mean by that but obviously no spoilers here so yeah <laughs> next up i am buddy reading the morganville series with my mum and my sister and we read the first two books so we read glass houses and the dead girls dance by rachel kane I am loving being back in this world. Oh, I just love these characters so much. And I forgot how much I love them. So these both got a four star, which I am not surprised at. They got a four star the first time I read them, which was when I wasn't using Corpo. I was just rating them. So first up, Glass Houses, I gave 10 for characters, 8 for atmosphere, 7 for writing, 8 for plot, 9 for intrigue, 9 for logic, and 10 for enjoyment. As you can tell, I really enjoy these books. They're amazing. And then for Dead Girls Dance, again, 10 for characters, 8 for atmosphere, 7 for writing, 8 for plot, 9 for intrigue, 8 for logic, and 10 for enjoyment. So these were very... <laughs> I th these were very similar in ratings for each individual thing um i do really enjoy the the first few and the last few books the middle books i'm anticipating will possibly get a three star or a lower four star but we'll see how that goes because obviously i haven't got to them yet but what we are doing we are alternating months so january we read two morganville books in february we're gonna give the first book in the game of thrones series a go and then march we'll read the next two books in morganville and then the next book in game of thrones depending on how we get on with the first game of thrones book but yeah i'm really excited to be rereading these and for my mum and my sister to read them for the first time so yeah 
Next up we have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armantrout. This came out as a five star, which I'm not shocked about at all. So I absolutely loved this. I buddy read this with my friend Lauren at Lautopia. Um, although I say we buddy read, we started buddy reading, then I read ahead. Then I fell behind because she read ahead and then we decided to just both finish it. So it was a very unorganized buddy read because we just neither of us could put this down at times there's a van outside how rude so for this i gave it an eight for characters a 10 for atmosphere a nine for writing eight for plot 10 for intrigue eight for logic and 10 for enjoyment and not gonna lie i am so excited for the sequel i have it ready i'll be reading it this month and i cannot wait so you'll see my thoughts on that very soon and then i've got to wait till like april for the third book so Next we have The Battle Mage by Tara Matharu. This is the final book in the Summoner trilogy. I have loved following Fletcher's story and this ending was oh, so good. I was in tears at one point. I was, I was warned that this book would break me and it broke me and then there was that the little bit of hope but it was like a bit of sweet hope but i just absolutely loved it this was a four star so i gave it a 10 for characters eight for atmosphere eight for writing nine for plot eight for intrigue eight for logic and 10 for enjoyment characters i couldn't give anything other than a 10 i absolutely loved the characters and even the characters you don't like are just such brilliant characters like I don't like the characters but they're written so well and yeah I just I absolutely love all the characters including the ones I hate because they're written you get what I mean so yeah and I just really enjoyed finishing this series and look at me finishing series while also starting some as well I mean you win some you lose some with me <laughs> Next up we have Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Mass. So if you know me at all, you'll know that the Throne of Glass series is my all time favorite book series. And this is a reread for me. I reread Throne of Glass the middle of last year and then just never ended up picking up this. And I think it's because this is actually my least favorite of the series, this book. And I think I was just sort of putting it off but I'm really glad I did dive into it because I actually did enjoy it more this time round reading it. Um, but even though it is my least favourite, it does still come out as a five star. Um, I just love this whole series and I just, although this is the, this is the part where of the series where I start to dislike a certain character and I don't like the character again until basically the end of the series but for this <laughs> 10 for characters 9 for atmosphere 9 for writing 10 for plot 10 for intrigue 10 for logic and 10 for enjoyment it's an almost 10 all round i just it's not a perfect book but do you know what i absolutely adore it and <sighs> the next book in the series is like up there with one of my favorites so i'm excited to get back into my reread for this series next up we have majesty by Catherine mcgee so this is the sequel to american royals which i read in i want to say 2019 i think and i love this so <laughs> this is basically what if america had a royal family and it follows beatrice the first book follows beatrice who is next in line and she basically has to marry and there's drama so much drama it is like a soap opera which i hate those but i love this like this is so not my type of book and i don't know where it come from but i just I absolutely love this duology and something happens at the end of the first book which causes me to start crying 
in the two page prologue of this is it two page yeah so there's a two page prologue of this book and because of the ending of the first book i was crying within those two pages i cried quite a lot of this some were happy tears some were like mm, tears and some were like yes beatrice tears um but i just i really enjoyed the ending of this it did not end how i thought it would it was going one way and then it just went a completely different way and I'm actually really glad it ended how it did because the way I thought it was going to end, I wasn't going to be satisfied with that ending. But luckily, it did end a different way, but I didn't see that ending coming. So this got a five star, which shook. <laughs> so... It got a 9 for characters, 8 for atmosphere, 9 for writing, 10 for plot, 9 for intrigue, 8 for logic and 10 for enjoyment. And this is actually my favourite book that I read in January. So it's there. And another series ended. Like, look at me ending series. Look at me ending series. I'm, I'm proud of me. Be proud of me too. Next up, we have A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Mass. This was obviously my reread that I did with Liv. So obviously we reread the first two books in December and we reread this one in January and it got to me a lot more this time reading it. And I think it's because I knew what was coming. I knew what was going to happen and it was absolutely heartbreaking like it really i had to stop what i was doing when i was reading it. i was listening to the audiobook along with it i had to put the actual physical book down because i couldn't see the pages through my tears and i was also like flitting in between like tidying as well and i had to stop sit there and just sob through the audiobook that's how much it got to me this time round but obviously this is the last book in the original trilogy it's the main three books of the Akatar series and I just I absolutely love this and there's a character that gets a kind of redemption arc and I said it the first time I read it but I'm really glad that even though that character had some form of redemption, they didn't get a full like, oh, everything's forgiven. You know, I did loads of bad things, but you're going to forgive me now. Like there was a understanding, but there wasn't full forgiveness. And I really like that because a lot of books, it's just like, oh, yeah, let's just forget all those bad things you did. Like, no, that's not how the world works. But anyway, off, a off on a tangent. Yeah, I absolutely loved this so much more the second time reading. And of course, this got a five star. So 10 for characters, 10 for atmosphere, 9 for writing, 9 for plot, 9 for intrigue, 9 for logic and 10 for enjoyment. So this is a pretty high five star, which are we shocked? No, we're not. <laughs> Then we have Sea Fire by Natalie C. Parker. I finally read this book. I've had this since July 2019 and I've put it on approximately three or four TBRs and every single time it's on a TBR I just don't pick it up and this time I did and I'm really glad I did because this was so good. This is like piratey and it's a crew of women like yes like I loved this so much and I said this in my vlog but one of my favorite things about the main character is that she is quite relatable in the sense that she does make mistakes she is overprotective of her crew because she doesn't want part the history repeating itself and her losing people she loves um and basically she does make mistakes like that cause that Call over cautiousness makes her make mistakes and those mistakes have consequences and she does have to deal with the consequences of that and I really like seeing how her character grows and how she has to learn to trust in the other people on her crew like yes they will follow her she, she is their captain but you know she has to trust that they want to take risks for the greater good um and i just i mean it literally says that their sisterhood is survival and that this book literally encompasses that perfectly and i absolutely adored this 
This came out as a very high four star. So we've got nine for characters, eight for atmosphere, eight for writing, nine for plot, 10 for intrigue, nine for logic and nine for enjoyment. So this, I, the ending, this is another one where I genuinely thought it was going a different way with the ending. And then it went a completely different way. And I'm actually so glad it didn't end the way I was expecting. Cause I do think that would have affected my rating in a bad way like I, I it still would have had a pretty high rating but i just i wouldn't have enjoyed it as much and it the ending made me have to like immediately go in search of the second book which unfortunately the paperback has not been released in the uk so i can't get the cover that matches this but i did cave and buy the ebook instead as it was on sale at the time so i'm hoping to continue this very soon because this ending was just amazing next up we have alex and eliza by melissa de la cruz so this is sort of like an historical fiction which is not my type of book usually i would not look at historical fiction the only reason i was interested in this is because it is based off alexander hamilton and eliza schuyler which if you've seen the musical hamilton you'll know who they are um obviously it is based off history but i, I, I don't know american history because British schools don't teach American history. Um, so all that I know of, of American history is from the Hamilton musical and this book, which this is, yeah. But I, this was not what I was thinking. This is a very, very different take on their love story. And it was very slow burn. And I, one, do not like historical fiction and two, do not like slow burn. The historical fiction side I could get behind because it's based on Hamilton however the slow burn I don't think I would have picked this up if I'd known um I ended up giving this a three star so it got seven for characters six for atmosphere five for writing seven for plot seven for intrigue eight for logic and seven for enjoyment so even though the characters are the same as the ones in the musical they got a pretty low rating because the characters are very different in this than they are in the musical like i feel like it has been changed and i know it's historical fiction but it just this this wasn't for me however i am intrigued to read because there is two more books in this series and i am intrigued to read them just because i, I want to see what else their take the author's take on their love story is so is that a, that's a train oh let's wait for it to pass then we have hood by jenny elder moke i really enjoyed this this is see i when i first started hearing about this book i heard a lot of people saying that it's sort of like a robin hood retelling however i would not class this as a retelling this is about isabel who is the daughter of marion and robin hood and both robin and marion feature quite heavily in this story um so basically isabel has to go in search of her father who she has just found out is robin hood and she stumbles across the merry men and she then has to look for her dad with the merry men and they find him and stuff happens um so yeah i wouldn't necessarily class this as a retelling i think i did call it a retelling in my vlog just because i'm so used to referring to it as a retelling but it's not actually a retelling it's more of a continuation take on robin hood but i did really enjoy this and i it's definitely made me intrigued for anything the author does bring out next um because this was uh the, their debut and i'm really excited to learn more about isabel and also the merry men that she becomes quite close with so we only find out really about one of them which is adam but i'd quite like to find out about the others that are in their little group because i really like the characters especially little little cracks me up but um but yeah this got a four star so i gave it eight for characters seven for atmosphere eight for writing eight for plot eight for intrigue eight for logic and nine for enjoyment i did really enjoy this and it was a very bittersweet ending 
and that's all I'm going to say on the ending but I did really enjoy it and I believe this is a standalone however if there is a sequel I will be here for it it did end in a way that you can sort of make up your own mind about how it's going to go it could literally go anywhere from here um but I think it would be nice if there was a, a sequel, even if it wasn't like a direct sequel necessarily. I think it would be really cool to have one. But if not, it's still a great standalone. And yeah, I really enjoyed this. And then the final book is Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. I have I, I have most of, well, actually, I have all of <laughs> Alice Oseman's works. So I discovered her through... The Heartstopper graphic novels which are just incredible I absolutely love them and of her actual novels I have only until this point read I was born for this and it is one of my favorite books I absolutely adore it however this one I didn't love as much I did still really enjoy it I did really love the characters but I just it wasn't as much for me um but she does talk a lot about mental health in this and it's just, she just writes about mental health so well and it's just so relatable. And in this we have gay characters, we have bisexual characters and I just, I'm so appreciative of the rep we get in Alice Oseman's books, especially as I'm bisexual, it's nice seeing good, like nice bisexual representation and not just like, oh they're doomed <laughs> like it's nice to see like happy endings for bi characters um but yeah i i did enjoy this even though it wasn't my favorite but this got a three star overall so a uh, seven for characters five for atmosphere seven for writing nine for plot seven for intrigue six for logic and seven for enjoyment logic got a fairly low rating um just because i there were some things which just didn't seem like they they, they worked um i can't say what obviously because i don't want to do any spoilers i don't want to say any spoilers um but there was just a few things that just made me like stop and think hmm really but it was it was nothing to like affect my enjoyment too much luckily but yeah this got a three overall but i did really enjoy it still and i am definitely picking up her other books and yeah one of my favorite authors one of my favorite contemporary authors because i'm not a huge fan of contemporary so i would definitely say one of my favorite contemporary authors so that was my January wrap up. I think that was a pretty good start to the year. I'm really happy with that. I've managed to get a couple of series finished, a couple of rereads in, and I'm really excited and hoping that I can take this energy into the rest of the year. We're going to we're going to say it now and we're going to manifest it and make it make it a thing fingers crossed. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've read any of these books and you loved them too, let me know. Or altern alternatively, if you didn't like them, let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Bye.